I'm, I want to start off first with this idea here that you are a business that cuts across a, a wide variety of products, uh, selling the additives that go into a lot of different products. Where in the quarter are you still seeing significant amount of strength for your products? Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, and thanks for, for having me. What we see is in particular in our um, scent business on the consumer fragrances, a lot of strengths in terms of the hygiene products or in detergent. And that's actually, it's cutting across, across the globe. That's what we see. And we see also in terms of packaged food where some of our flavors are in there, a high, high demand here. So that's, that's actually uh, very specific for these two or three ca categories we are in. Um, I want to hear a little bit more, uh, Andres, about your supply chain. Can you talk a little bit about the impact on your supply chain and delivery and, and whether this will be something temporary or it'll last and persist into 2021? Yeah, what we see is actually um, when this COVID-19 crisis started in, in China, uh, we saw the first impact on, on our manufacturing plants there. Luckily enough, we could prepare for all the 110 plants that all of them are working because it moved them to Europe and then to the U.S. and, and, and Latin America. What we see right now is uh, a lot of stress on the supply chain, in particular in India, because a lot of our raw materials are coming out of, out of India. So we had to uh, basically have a plan A, B, and C to make sure that we can substitute some of these raw materials. So far, I have to say it's going very, very well. On top of it, we have seen in some of the categories I just mentioned, a lot of higher demand than we had before and in last year, for, for example. So we have to cover for that, yeah. for that as well. So we uh, moved in stronger inventory positions just to make sure that we are in a position to deliver to all of our customers. So, Andreas, how much of your business is tied to that end user, that end product, that finished product versus some of the intermediate, intermediate type of supply? What's the breakdown there? The breakdown is that basically more than 90% of our uh, products and technologies are tied to the end, uh, uh, end consumer products. And we see out of this probably 85% uh, of our product portfolio is for essential businesses and essential products, as I described before, for some of the fragrances and some of the uh, taste and, and flavor solutions here, here as well. So we see actually very nicely uh, how the consumers are behaving. We are looking into uh, some of the trends right now, uh, pre-COVID, during COVID, and what might have happen after post-COVID, and what do we have to do with our consumer insights to inform our R&D people to make sure that we get the right technologies. What we see so far, that probably the demand for hygiene, uh, hygiene products will be sustainable even post-COVID, or that some of these uh, uh, food products, which are fortified with, with vitamins or probiotics, are sustainable as well. And that's important to prepare for the time post-COVID. Okay, interesting. Um, to give us a, a glimpse into that, does that mean you're investing more in those parts of the business? Do you anticipate spending more on those segments? Yep, we are starting to do so, and we're working very closely with our, our customers in the product development, we spend as, as a business between 8 to 9% of our sales line in research and development. And that's an important piece to, to help to come up with technologies. It's not just ingredients like flavors. It is also full solutions. And it is also uh, technologies like sweetness modulation where you can reduce sugar in some of, some of the food because you have a sugar tax, for example, in the UK or in Mexico or in other countries, countries as well. So that's right now happening to make sure that we are prepared for the time after COVID.